to eradicate corruption, maladministration, unethical leaders, and the abuse of taxpayers' money by those in power continues. It's fresh, it's fearless, and focused. The Outer Hour, where your voice matters. Hello and welcome to an outer hour where we celebrate tonight. Wherever you find yourself in South Africa or around the world, welcome to the show. I'm Tom London with you for the next 60 minutes while we discuss this evening the end of ETOLs. We'll also update you on what's happened as far as electoral reform is concerned down in Parliament. Uh, we'll catch up with Rachel Fisher in the show tonight and uh, find out what Alta is planning to do about the latest happenings regarding electoral reform. But I don't know about you, if you were looking at the uh, Twitter feeds and social media feeds and news feeds today, you would have seen tweets like this. Transport Minister Fikile Mbalula says they need to cancel nearly 200,000 driver's licenses. Same um, kind of news coming out of the Transport Ministry. The five-year driving license renewal period will be extended. So says Minister Mbalula. Alta has been calling for a 10-year extension for some time. The Premier of Gauteng said, We heard you people of Gauteng. As per the announcement by the Minister uh, Gorongwana, we've agreed to the formulation of a new revenue enhancement model which includes tolling. We're ready to start a new life without e-tolls in Gauteng. It was not an easy decision but necessary, said the uh, Premier of Gauteng. Um, wow. Well, Wayne Duvenage has been saying this day has been coming. We'll be catching up with advocates Stefani Fick, Andrea van Heer and Ari Sellers, former CEO of the Quad Paris Association of South Africa on the show tonight. We'll also be catching up with you. And in just a moment, we'll play you a message from Wayne Duvenage, the CEO of Alta, as well as take you to a bridge brigade this afternoon to see what South African motorists had to say via their horns and their hooters as they drove under the bridges of civil society and the activism that has brought down ETOS. I know the government and the premier and politicians would like to claim that it was all they're doing, but let's be honest. This started when a couple of people got into a boardroom some years ago and said, this, is, this scheme is irrational, it's illogical, it's too expensive, and it ain't going to work. Uh, and fought the good fight for years and years and years until we heard the announcement in Parliament today. Now, we normally have a uh, chief whip. Who is our chief whip tonight? Claire Feldman says evening team out, and Claire Feldman is normally our chief whip. However, our producer, Devaney Davids, snuck in first tonight. So, the producer of the show, <laughs> Devaney Davids, is our chief whip this evening. And uh, we'll, shall we run through a couple of alerts quickly? Why not? We're celebrating tonight. Uh, Andrea van Heerden says, Good evening, out of family. Stefani Fick will be on your screen and in the comment section. How's it? Says the good advocate. Judy van Gelsveik says, Good evening, team out and fellow in Arterians. And Tom, hello, Judy. Nice to have you with us again. Uh, Carl Edwards on YouTube. YouTube is being moderated by. Is it Samantha van Nispen? Yeah, I think Sam's on YouTube and Masekho Motsuneng is on Facebook tonight. Uh, Madeline Gurch says, hello to the best team ever. Christo Fenter says, evening everybody, happy to be here. Carl Edwards says, Tom, thank you too. Well, thank you, Carl. Uh, and I echo the words of Wayne Divinage in thanking you for the support of Outer over the years. Jeff P. Scott says, good evening everybody. Very well done, Outer. Nicola Jane Good is on board. Good evening everybody. Uh, Desmond van Breda, good evening guys, says Desmond. Janine Blake, what a wonderful day today, says Janine Blake. And Melissa Whitehorn will do one or two more. Hello from Pretoria, where we don't have ETOLs. Ivan Rigney says, congratulations, Outer. Roland Krabenoft is on board. Jonathan Frank says, yeah. Fakile Dada says, good evening, everybody. Well done, Outer. Michael John Billsbury from the Eastern Cape says, hello to the Outer team. Janine Blake says, hello, everybody. Edward uh, Rakokong says, big up, Wayne. You're indeed an outgoing tax abuse practitioner. And Michael Fonica, thank you, Arthur. Civil disobedience. Shall we leave it there? We'll pop more of the hellos on screen as we make our way through the show. So, um, shall we say? Shall we catch up with the CEO of Arthur first and find out what Wayne Divinage has to say to you about the end of Etols? Well done, South Africa. Etols is finally dead, and you did it. It was the moral courage of over two million karting motorists who defied the law and refused to pay e-tolls that eventually brought the scheme to its knees. 
And that has also brought government to its senses. They had no choice but to cancel their irrational and expensive and inefficient ETOL decision. This successful civil disobedience campaign wasn't about the freeway upgrade, which is just one element of dealing with urban congestion. It was about a finance scheme that was not introduced to serve the best interests of the people. Sanwell didn't meaningfully engage with the public and government didn't heed the calls of society. So from this resounding victory by the people, we trust that government will learn to start serving society better and to make decisions that suit the best interests of the public. And from this resounding victory, we trust that the people of South Africa have got a taste of their power and their ability to stand strong when it is very necessary to do so. And so Artis salutes you, the ordinary citizen who refused to succumb to the threats and irrational decisions of government. Your government serves you, not the other way around. Well done again, South Africa. Well, lots of congratulations coming in on screen, and I'll get through as many comments and questions as we can through the show. So Matthew Nisbin, the head of marketing and comms for Outer, sent me this video. The Bridge Brigade was out this afternoon, and this is what motorists hey. had to say. Well, let's start talking, shall we? And say good evening, first up tonight, to the good advocate, Advocate Stefani Fick, the Executive Director of the Accountability Division at Outer. Hello, Stefani. How's it, Tom? How's it, everybody? I think, um, yeah, I think we are in good spirits and, and, and something that this country really needs. You know, we, we are struggling. Our economy is not doing great. But yeah. after this speech, I think, you know, the celebrations is just good for the soul. And these types of announcements that, um, you know, there is a part of me that wants to say, I told you so, you mm -hmm. know, that Alta and all the active citizens and all the supporters of Alta sort of sitting saying tonight, <laughs> laughing in our, on our sleeves and saying, we told you so. But kudos to everybody. I think as a team, we celebrated. Um, I think celebrations is going to continue for a while. But but you know what? To everybody out there watching tonight, Alta supporters, whoever you are, thank you for just proving your own power. Thank you for the support as you tune into the program tonight. Remember to like and share this broadcast so we can get the good news out to as many South Africans as possible. We say good evening and joined by Andrea van Heerden, Senior Legal Project Manager at Outer. Good evening, Andrea. You're in good spirits tonight? Hi, good evening, Tom, and good evening all the Arterians out there. Um, I don't know if you can notice, but I think I have a glow tonight. You do. And um, you it's do. a glow of victory. <laughs> I'm not gloating at all, but uh, yeah, I, I share Stefani, but what an amazing victory for civil society, for each and every South African that said, we are not going to support this irrational, unconstitutional scheme. This is um, such a big victory, not just for Arta, but for all the Arta supporters and all the citizens that stood up against this. So no, it's a wonderful day. And um, I think the premonition uh, is starting to come true that we had at the beginning of the year that mm. things are going to happen. Uh, we're going to see prosecutions, we're going to see irrational schemes fall. So this is just the first of many dominant and uh, I'm very positive and I'm looking forward to what's going to happen in the next couple of months. So are we. Uh, the Joining and completing the trio in the first segment tonight is Ari Selis, former CEO of the Quad Para Association, who joined Outer in the fight many, many moons ago. Are you in good spirits tonight as well, Ari? Thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks, Tom. Yeah, and uh, thanks. I'm humbled to, to have been invited to be here tonight. And, and uh, what a profound uh, uh, day it is. Certainly. Isn't it just? Yeah. Um, I was one of the original. Um, call it five or six people that, that um, got involved with or, or sort of, uh, you know, with the starters of Arta. Um, and there was a particular reason why. And first of all, I do, I think it's so important for me to say to everybody that followed and supported Arta, um, I think Arta would not have done, um, would have not completed the job without 
the supporters and the people that donated towards Arta because that was yeah. our big uh, nemesis was being able to raise funds to keep going. Yeah, and how legal, you get the money. Mm. Legal fight, and that was really, really critical. Uh, but let me say that um, as a former CEO of Quasa at the time, um, I represent most of the wheelchair users in the country. And the e system never really catered for, for our needs, which was very few people that use wheelchairs drive vehicles. We all rely on the goodwill of people to give us lifts from A to B. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that volunteerism just dropped away because um, the volunteers who were prepared to maybe sacrifice fuel for their good to charity to drive us, um, you know, non-driving wheelchair users, especially in the township areas, you know, coming into town for jobs and job interviews and skills, um, you know, nobody would, would give our people lifts anywhere. And it's because we didn't have the right to have a, a zero-rated um, e-toll card. Mm. Um, and so the system wasn't designed and wasn't didn't consult people with disabilities. And so we joined us, we joined out as an applicant against Sanrol those days back, right in the beginning. And I, I'll tell you something quite profound, that when e-tolls were launched, this is actually the cover, and I'll, I'll quickly show you the cover of my autobiography, which has just been launched. And the well, cover I'll, picture, I'll pop it up on screen quickly, Ari, because oh, we've got okay. it here. So, there we go. Um, us burning a wheelchair, and it wasn't that we, we've got enough wheelchairs in the country that we can just burn any wheelchair. The wheelchair was condemned, but it was a big statement that saying that ETOS was, was, is burning us um, and stopping us in our tracks. And so I'm a very proud um, supporter of Arta. Um, and very proud to have been in the beginning um, when one of, the, one of the pioneers of Arta and well done, um, you know, to the minister who made that decision. I'm sure that Gauteng government um, is relieved as well. Yes. Uh, not having to try and find that revenue. They'll never find that revenue. And obviously everybody driving vehicles in the Gauteng area, you know, well done for, for standing up for Arta. We couldn't have done it without them. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to have a glass of something this evening. Good stuff. Uh, we'll talk about your involvement in just a moment, but let me get to uh, Advocate Stefani Fick and talk about uh, your reaction, Stefani and Arta's reaction and position regarding the announcement by the Finance Minister today. What does Arta have to say about this? Well, I think it's quite clear that the, the writing is on the wall. The ETOS is going to be scrapped. I think we also listened to, um, while I was waiting for an interview, listened to the, to, to the interview with um, um, uh, Premier Le Sufi, who guaranteed that although they need to find the funding model for the 30% that they're going to pay towards ETOLs, uh, the ETOLs funding bill and, 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 and outstanding debt, is that they will not. ETOLs are scrapped. ETOLs is no longer a point of contention. It, it doesn't exist anymore. So, you know, after today, I think it's quite clear. I must say there's probably a few administrative things that need to happen, um, a few things that still, you know, um, we don't quite understand, but that's a technical thing. So mm. I think those are the things we'll deal with to, uh, next week when we've all sort of come down from from realizing that you know this this fight is over. I think the, the in summary, this fight is over. And can I just say again? I think we've. Um, we're going to say thank you a lot, but thank you to Ari and Wayne and the team that started all of this. I mean, I think they yeah. gave us the. Without them, I think a tremendous know, a amount of, of courage back then. Huh? Courage, courage, and resilience. I think and tenacity. I think that. I think the ETOL fight, which is a you know the longest running uh, project in Alta, is really um, sums up. Um, you know what Alta is about. Yeah, I really think. It's I just, I'm just thinking. Wow, what an what an amazing start. The genesis of the organisation undoing tax abuse started with one fight, and now has many uh, cases and fights on the table, and many successes and victories. You look at Dudumiani being declared a delinquent director, Alta's involvement with uh, state capture and the commission, and all of the dirt that was uncovered by Alta. Uh, the, the the transport minister today announcing an extension on driver's licenses, which is what Alta has been pushing for for some time. Uh, and of course, the spotlight being shone on electoral reform, the uh, state of water in South Africa at the moment, and many other uh, uh, issues that Alta is busy tackling, yes. all started with this ETOLS fight, hey? Eh? Yes, yes. And, and, and you know what, maybe this is also a shout out to, to everybody that supported Alta, you know, right in the beginning. Um, you get the question a lot, and I think it's a, a, a people do not understand that Alta is crowdfunded. 
by ordinary South Africans. We don't get huge amounts from business or, mm. you know, we have political co- connotations, whatever. We are crowdfunded by ordinary people. And, and, and it's really, it is a proud moment. And I think everybody nice. should, should take a moment. But that doesn't mean it's the end of the road. That is the beauty no, well, of being part of a well, well like here's here's a comment from Michael Fonecker who says, may this be a lesson that we have the power. We need to support yes. Auto while corruption carries on unabated. And I think that's in essence what you're yeah. saying. Yes, yes. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much. Is that I think on the one hand it showed that, you know, don't mess with civil society and don't mm. mess with Auto. Because um, um, we have the tenacity and, and we have the resilience and we will keep on fighting the good fight. Um, you know, and, and we are in this process of eradicating corruption. And it's a big fight, but we are willing to 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 do that with the help of again, ordinary citizens. So well, couple yeah, I just want to say, yeah. watch the space. We we're partying tonight and we 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 are celebrating. But couple of yeah, the dominoes have fallen, but wrong. many more to fall. I mean, let me just throw a question at you before we get uh, to Ari, because I want to ask him about his involvement in the early days. But here's a question from Donovan Bridenhan, who says, but it's in the hands of the Gauteng government to decide over ETOLs. What does this mean, realistically? And I think there might be some skepticism. And I mean, when I read the uh, the announcement, I watched the announcement from the finance minister, Stefani, I was like, okay, you're taking 70% of the debt, 30%, and it all gets quite technical. Does that Was that effectively the end of ETOLs, these gantries and ETOL devices and stuff like that? Stefani? Oh, sorry, I thought, sorry, I'm reading, <laughs> oh, I, I'm reading I was watching you reading comments everybody. in the comment section. Let me just, let me just remind you again, Donovan <laughs> Bredenhan says, it's back in the hands of Gauteng government to decide over ETOS. What does this mean realistically? I think there might be some skepticism that they go, oh, okay, well, we're going to launch it at a reduced fee or we, we put it back up at a, you know, discount or something like that. No? Um, I, th- I think what I can say is we will definitely, um, um, we still need to sort out the whole, uh, you know, the, the legal stuff, and uh, there are some um, fees outstanding and, 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 and so forth. So we still need to do the, the admin part of all of this. But I can assure you, you we will make sure that, you know, how Ting just doesn't repeat whatever National tried to do with, with mm. ETOLs. But I have to. I have to believe the Premier when he says that, you know, how Ting is right from the start said that they are against ETOLs. Whether they want to claim victory because this is a political, I don't know, that's um, that's there in Darba. But we will definitely keep an eye um, on, on, on this whole process. But I think, I think lesson learned and they will think twice of, of even thinking about bringing ETOLs back. Good stuff. Johan Fenter's got a question and I think I'm going to throw it at uh, Andrea van Heerden. What will happen with the citizens who have outstanding ETOL bills? Will that be scrapped or do we still face the law? Andrea. Well, um, Tom, unfortunately, if we look, if we just look at um, the enacting provision, giving Sanwell the power to collect ETOs, that's in the Sanwell Act. So until that legislation or until the declaration of tolls are retracted, that still remains. But uh, no one in their right mind, I mean, they haven't been successful in the past eight years by collecting ETO debts. So we don't see how they can be successful going forward. But as Wayne mentioned today on numerous occasions as well, if after today you still pay ETOLs, you are crazy because there's no way for them to enforce this. So going Got it. no. But again, there's a lot of things, a lot of admin practical things that need to happen, and we'll discuss it a little bit later. But for instance, one of those things is a, a declaration that declared the GF of toll roads, national toll ro- roads now need to be retracted. So it shouldn't be declared as a toll road as such. Okay. Until that happens in law, they can still get that money or collect that debt. But, I mean, again, I always say the best prediction of future behavior is past behavior, and they would just be insane to try to collect that now. Too true. Let's ask Ari Sellers, Se- uh, former CEO of the Quad Para Association of South Africa, about the early days, because this fight started with just a few people around a boardroom table. Uh, Ari, take us back to the very beginning and why you got involved in this fight when so many people didn't want to touch it. Okay, Tom, thanks a lot. And I did mention uh, just a brief um, part of it um, when you first introduced me. So, um, as I mentioned, 
wheelchair users who uh, predominantly don't drive their own vehicles um, and relied on the volunteerism of their neighbor, the pastor, uh, their brother, their sister and family to drive them around um, the greater Gauteng area, um, suddenly realized that they would be absolutely paralyzed by the fact that people would say, look, I can't afford to drive you around anymore. And that's to places of skills development, maybe to church, maybe to soccer, or maybe to your place of employment, um, because they would be paying the toll. There was no ways for us to become exempt. You know, we, we demanded the right. Of course, we didn't support the system at all. But if the system was to be in place, we wanted the right to be registered e-toll uh, payers, but to be exempt. But if you don't own a vehicle, you can't own a card. You know, you can't have the e-toll mm. And uh, They'd never consulted us in the beginning. So as I mentioned, um, we felt we were paralyzed by the fact that we were never included in the program and we could have been included. And the system wasn't designed uh, for individuals that don't own vehicles to have an, an, you know, an ETAB. Um, and it was a long journey. Uh, you know, we, we've joined, the Quad Power Association joined out as an applicant in the first court case, which we won and there were lots of celebrations and that was short-lived. We lost in the appeal court, unfortunately, you know, and it was all about money. And I go back to this, you know, art of sustainability is all about the people in the Gauteng area who put their hands in their pockets and fed the cause um, because we really battled and we actually just had to pull out. We couldn't go to the constitutional court because we couldn't raise the funds. And a lot of the corporate sector um, were reluctant to support Arta because they felt that government would, would stop their contracts. Contracts, yeah. Having, uh, e tags. But, you know, that time has passed. And then I think that every most of the people that have um, given to Arta realize that um, you know it's this is a civil this is a civil case and the civil courage of people in Gauteng was just absolutely amazing and I think that that's a lot of respect I'd like to show is that people showed tremendous civil courage and supported Arta and I hope they do so going forward so we had lots of interesting stories we met until the middle of the night what did it feel like back then Ari? Well, i mean you're talking about meeting in the middle of the night a group of people saying no nah, we're not going to take this what was the feeling back then just describe the energy and the the, the emotions well, at the time okay of course your ceo wayne duvenage um i mean he had to give up his red jacket and as the ceo of avis uh, it was so it was it was so tight um, and he didn't know when his next paycheck was going to come from. Um, and the rest of us were volunteers, actually. So I really got to give a lot of credit to Wayne for saying no. Uh, he's got tremendous civil courage. And he just said, I'm going to lead this team and we're going to win. And Arta didn't have an office. We just moved from each of our offices um, and decided each meeting where to meet. Um, and it was, um, yeah, it was very nervous times. I mean, to be honest, I actually got a couple of threats. And I don't want to go into to, to the detail. And our particular organization lost funding from the National Lottery because we're an NPO. Really? They just said, so long as we're involved in the ETOL fight, you're not going to get funds from the National Lottery. And then I remember once the Minister of Finance then, um, who's still a minister now, um, Pravin Gordon actually tried to separate Wayne and I in meetings in Pretoria and tried to get the Quad Pair Association to sign a document saying uh, we agree to be exempt, but they had no way of, of exempting us. Um, and then make a press statement that we feel that ETOLs are fine. And we never budged. And, and I think that's the, the very big thing is that the team believed in what we were doing. Um, and there were some, let's call it half a dozen um, brave men uh, around at that time. And, you know, one or two women in the team then. I mean, I'm glad to see the gender balance has, has changed nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so, you know, I think most of our phones were tapped and it was... Uh, no, it was awkward. And then we had to deal with Nazi Ali, who really is with respect. And I can say what I want about him, you know, without getting myself into trouble. You know, he's a horrible man. And he just didn't, uh, he was nasty and had some terrible, um, we eventually, the Quad Pair Association, we took him to the Human Rights Commissioner and we won. And not without a screaming match in the boardroom there, but and, and in my autobiography, I described that. And it was great that I could remember and pen it down. Mm. Um, and the Intel Saga book written by Wayne. We can now throw it in the bin. It was a great read. But now it's we can archive it. Yeah. The job is done. And we're very proud. And I can assure you, I'm about to put a notice out to all wheelchair users in the country through the Quad Para Association. We will celebrate. Because just to mention one critical thing is that, yes, eventually there was so much pressure and uncomfortability that the disability sector also revolted against ETOLs, that the minister 
at the time, I mean, the Minister of Transport changed so many times, um, stood up um, and she said, um, all people with disabilities will be exempt, but never really gave the detail. And the devil is in the detail. Um, and so we would, some of us tried to test the system by applying. And it was all it nonsense. Was, yes, is that you had to collect the accounts of everybody who was traveling you around and then submit them in in a monthly basis uh, yeah, to an ETOL on. office and then yeah, ask for a refund. Yeah. I mean, no wheelchair users going to even have the time. It could take some month work to do that. So it was just, um, it was really just a white lie and it never really was sustainable to exempt us. And so um, I'd like to say, Tom, and to, to the team that's present, yes. uh, we're absolutely thrilled. Um, and it's no, there's no point in, in thinking back on the journey of the tough times, I think rather celebrate the good times, and that is today. Um, and um, I know that Arta will still have, has plenty of purposes. And so um, if people can just acknowledge that's one battle won. Many more to many come. Many battles eh? on yeah. the Ari, yes. uh, Donovan, so, uh, uh, for Arta. Donovan Breedenhan uh, has a, a really good statement, and I'd like you to respond to this or add to it. If corporate joined this fight in the beginning, ETOL would have died years ago, except corporate all jumped to get their ve vehicles fitted with e-tags. Well, that's hit the nail on the head. Have you ever made that comment? I mean, that was a critical thing. I'm not going to name names, but some of the big corporates that are involved in logistics as well, they've got their trucks going around and around the Gauteng area. I mean, they wouldn't give us a penny. And if we had the funds to go to the constitutional court, we would have won the battle right there and then. You know, ITO might not exist then because, they, you know, it was opposition against Urban Tolling Alliance. It's mm. changed its purpose now. We were dead in the water. We had to put our hands up and, and concede and, and capitulate in a way until Wayne saw the vision and said, we've got to go to the public. And they changed the funding model. Thank goodness, just in time. And so, okay, we couldn't go back to the constitutional court, but we could still drag this out and make it and, and ensure that the users the people that went under the gantries didn't pay. And that's what, what that broke the back of the program. And so absolutely right. If corporates had, if every corporate had given a hundred K, I mean, we would have more than enough money. Sanral, Sanral's pocket was as deep as anything. They could hire any advocate and, and they could go the whole way. And ours wasn't. I mean, we had a, we hardly had any money in the bank. We took risks and um, we did have some pro bono work from the attorneys but never enough to go the distance. Well, the distance has been gone and done and dusted. Uh, Ari, uh, uh, is it worth um, asking about um, the possible exemption for e-tolls uh, for people with disabilities, the present position? Is it, is it all just gone now? Is that something for people with disabilities to still consider? Well, I mean, if you have to see the application process you have to go through, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's, the paperwork is crazy. And um, so I think we'll just um, we'll hang our hat on, on, uh, with Arta and uh, with, the, um, with the Premier of Gauteng. I think it's well worth writing my letter saying, big relief, thank you very much. Um, you will be relieving uh, the, um, the neighbours and the friends and the family of people with disabilities of the burden um, you know, of paying for us. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I think we'll just enjoy the ride. We'll be on the same train and we'll enjoy the ride to Got freedom it. of equal um, payments. Stefani, what happens now? I mean, an announcement's been made, but there seems to be a lot of I's to be dotted, T's to be crossed and laws to be undone. Yeah, I think we can all rest assured. I, 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 I think I want to say to each and everyone, just don't worry. I think it's the end of ETOLs. That is why you supported Arta. So we will take care of, you know, the, the nitty gritty when it comes to, um, you know, all the summonses and all the the, the, the the court cases, rest assured. We also have our attorney on board, um, you know, Jenny, Jennings Incorporated, Andre and her team, mm. and we will take care of that. But yes, um, there's certain things that was also announced that doesn't really make sense because it's, you know, the, the minister said that the, that, that the um, freeway is now going to be, um, Gauteng's problem, but it's a national highway. Um, one can understand that, that um, you know, that they 
said that Gauteng must um, uh, assist in, 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 in buy, you know, uh, paying off the debt and so forth. But how are they going to give a, a, a national road to Gauteng province? Don't know. So those are the things. And we are also going to, um, what is also interesting is is the numbers. I mean, um, you know, Wayne is the numbers guy, but there's, mm. there, there's just some of these, you know, bullions as if it's, you um, sense is being thrown around and, and 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 to actually go and calculate because that was never um really put forward is how much was the debt um you know the bonds and and and, and all of that and how much was paid off how much is left and, and and all of that so that would be interesting to just find out um you know wasn't mm. there some something going wrong there as well because it's an in enormous amount of money really it is an enormous amount of money um but that being said um yes um the 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 Gauteng freeway so the the gfip was declared a toll road and then there was regulation saying that they can they can um you know certain tolls can be charged on certain roads now that should just be withdrawn and the declaration of that road as a toll road should also be um withdrawn so that um you know it's a then a normal road and they can maybe that piece of road can now be treated like a lot of other pieces of roads in in the rest of the country you know normal upgrades and so forth um and then obviously we need to take care of all the cases that is still on the court roll um that is outstanding well let me ask um, us let me ask andrea about that it leads me to my next question what happens with all these court matters that Alta has been defending thousands of them yeah so if i can start from the beginning tom Please. Um, i think it's for everybody just to understand how the normal civil civil litigation process works so normally if a plaintiff, which is in this case Samuel, issues a summons against someone for alleged debt, and they then later, um, they they don't want to continue. They have to withdraw the matter and normally have to tender costs associated with this litigation. So that's in essence what Samuel now needs to do, is because they were the instigating party. They were the plaintiffs in this, and the individuals or the outer supporters were the defendants which are to defend it on their behalf. So basically, Sanwell now with, needs to withdraw this and they have to tender costs. So how that's going to look, it's, it's, it's a completely different story because we all know that uh, something might look good, but pra practical, it might be a little bit difficult. But that's where our, um, our attorneys of record, Jennings Incorporated, like Stefani mentioned, will do that groundwork. So they have to engage with Sanwell's attorneys Sanwell had two attorneys firms. The one was on the high court matters, and that was Werksmans, one of the big five in South Africa. And then also Morris Fuller Williams, which uh, handled the match court matters all across South Africa. So um, our attorneys will engage with Sanwell's attorneys and ask them what the instruction is from Sanwell now. But as a general rule of thumb, Sanwell has to withdraw all these matters now, and they have to tend the costs. Got it. If you've got a question for the team tonight regarding the eToll's announcement by the finance minister today, then pop it in the comment section down below. There's a lot of chatter going on. I'm going to try and get to as many questions and comments as possible, but put your question or comment into the comment section now on the eToll topic. We'll get any questions answered by the experts tonight. And then I've got a question for you. What do you think we should do with all the eToll gantries? They look so pretty at night with their blue lights. Uh, what would you repurpose them for? You can be serious about this or tongue in cheek. I'll take any answer you got in the comment section. Pop it up on screen in just a few minutes minutes um so so you, you you're going to be watching this i i gather w watching to see the the withdrawals and um, uh, have you got have you got your what else have you got your eyes on is the legal team at our time i'm guessing you haven't left this alone it's you've still you've still you're still eagle-eyed about it oh, absolutely. Well, we have to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. you know we've dealt with etols so I hope the listeners will, will remember. I think the next next big fight is is R2. So um, we are in a constitutional court in November. So looking forward to 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 that fight. Um, um, and there's just you know whether it's legal or not. Uh, there's just so many opportunities in art and so many projects that different you know all the different project managers are dealing with. And I think this win, this good news, just gave everybody some new. New energy. Sorry, Andrea, I interrupted you there. 
No, no, not at all. No, I was just, uh, I was just agreeing with you. I said, uh, there's a lot of fights. There's, there's still a lot of fights left. I mean, um, if again, <laughs> the best prediction of future behavior is past behavior, mm. and tomorrow this investment will be in the past. So I think it just actually um, weighs onto the legitimacy of Alta, saying that if we do take on a cause, we will follow through. So even if it's legal or not just legal, it doesn't have to be legal, but if it's a cause that ARTA takes on, we will follow through because we are here to fight on behalf of ordinary citizens. And again, we won't be able to do it without the support of our ARTA supporters yep. or our all citizens of South Africa. So no, we're not going to leave this thing. Uh, like we mentioned, there's a lot of practicality and a lot of practical things that still need to happen. So we are very positive, but tonight we are celebrating and we're looking forward to many more victories and Stefani also alluded to it, R2 is another big one, um, which is going to affect Hateng, and specifically if the courts agree with us, which we are very positive about, but you never know what's going to happen. But that's also going to have an impact, not just on Hateng, but on the rest of South Africa yeah. as well, because we believe that R2 is unconstitutional. So, no, this is like I mentioned at the beginning in my opening statement, saying that this is the first of all the dominoes that's going to fall. So, no, it's, it's exciting times. So, if you have family, Friends that are not supporters of Alta, get them on board because watch the space. What what would you do with the Etol gantries, Andrea? Well, you know what? Um, I think there's a lot of things that can happen. This is not necessarily tongue in cheek, um, but I mean, if you look at average speed prosecution, there's a lot of things that can happen. And interesting enough, I also noted um, what the premier said after the announcement of the medium term budget speech and the allocations and everything with Etols. The second thing he mentioned after ETOLS was they are seriously considering on uh, what they're going to do to to curb crime. And I yes. think the gas and the infrastructure that is already there would be a useful tool in the, uh, the fight. Keeping our highways crime. safe. Yeah, good point. Yes, keeping our people and our highways safe. So that's what I, if I were in the driver's okay. seat. That's Got what it. I'll, I'll be asking yes. everyone. We'll get to Stefani in, in a moment. Let me ask Ari Sellis. Uh, Ari, what would you do with those gantries? Well, yeah, we thought about it for a long time as well. And Did Charter you? Has. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, billboards, billboard advertising, huge revenue streams for Sanrail. <laughs> yes. And who knows, Alta might even take a take a billboard. Yeah, we never pay so details. Yeah. Yeah, win-win. No, Alta takes a billboard for, uh, you know, keep people subscribing to Alta for the next case uh, we're going to go. So Sanrail will get some money back from Alta. Nice one. Let me ask Stefani Fick. What would you do with those gantries, Stefani? I don't know. I, I, my first question is, I, mean, I, I wonder how, um, how much electricity they take. So maybe yeah. they should just give some alternative um, um, uh, you know, power so that, so that we can have less load shedding maybe. But I agree with the general consensus that I do think that there's, there's – one can use that for 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 crime prevention and also um, crime detection. Um, on some of our roads, you know, for example, speeding. You you've got that um, that whole thing about if you drive a, a, in a, a certain distance, they can they can sort of calculate your averages and following. You know, if there's a stolen vehicle on the highways, although they don't always use the highways, but um, I think that there is definitely something one can use. And you know what, Alta has never been against the the the, the technology. So I, I think a lot of people will agree that the ETAC actually works quite well if you want to go through the concessionaires, which is, by the way, another project. Another project, that, yeah, no, that smells, yes. Yeah, um, you know, um, and, 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 and the technology that may be repurposed for, for, for something. I mean, Got it. Um, Karen, Hong says, I, I Karen Hong says burn them. Karen Hong says, <laughs> Karen Hong says, burn them. Rudy Hanika says, keep the gantries as monuments for e effective civil intervention. Nicola Jane Good says, use them as police cameras. 
Um, Paul Blackburn says these cameras can and will only be used for speed prosecution. That's all they're good for. There are other cameras along the highways to track vehicle movement. It will only become another cash cow under the R2 scheme, which Outer has its eye on and fighting against, as you know. Uh, I'm looking for some more uh, comments, so we'll get to them in a moment. Freddie Mills says the scrap merchants can now strip the tiles down for money. I'm <laughs> not so sure about that, Freddie. Warwick Stark says sell or rent the space for advertising to help pay for the maintenance. I think that's uh, that came up from one of the outer team alex Helzhoff says use them for traffic management and you know i got an idea i think that um we should put little platforms on them that people can stand on and then when you're convicted for corruption in south africa or fraud you're as part of your sentence before you go to jail they make you we get salim Essa back in this country prosecute him and then make him stand at one of those gantries so we can all drive underneath the corrupt and pop our horns and boo at them that would be look I'm not sure whether any judge would pass that sentence, but that's what I would do if I was a judge, Stefani Fick. <laughs> now you I know like why I'm too. not. I like. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fro 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 at, at everybody exactly. Standing on exactly. I think you'd have millions of people flooding the highways to do something like that. Uh, I'm looking for some questions. And well, there's Jacques saying, are they going to break those tolls uh, down and repurpose for other building needs? I mean, these, this is the question we're asking, Jacques. What happens to the infrastructure? What happens to the e tags? Uh, how uh, will it uh, be funded exactly out of Gauteng's budget? All of that will come out in the wash. Um, I'm just so many comments coming in here tonight. It's very difficult to keep up. So if I don't, if I don't, uh, if I don't get yours, then please forgive me. Uh, Claire says that she thinks the cameras will probably be dismantled, stolen, and sold. Uh, and will hopefully not the case, Claire. Uh, just quickly while we got you on the, on the air, and I know you're leaving now, uh, Stefani, but, um, or soon, Madeleine Gertz wants to talk about the driver's license announcement and Minister Fakila and Balula announcing that they were considering or going to extend driver's licenses uh, to a period of f uh, from five years to eight years. Alta was asking for 10. Madeleine says, yes, but eight is not ideal. 10 is better. What's your comment on that? Is that an acceptable compromise as far as Alta is concerned? I think so. Uh, and let's just take the fact that he that they listened. Um, I mean, someone commented, and it's probably true. They just didn't want to take ten because um, um, it would look like they listened to Alta. They, they, you know, they listened. Where you got the eight from? I have no idea. But it will. It will alleviate the administrative problems that they are struggling with. This romp slump and just an administrative nightmare that motorists are sitting with. I think it will alleviate that immediately. The only thing one can can and can can sort of ask for now is stop talking about it. Start doing. So issue the regulation so that we can now that our um, driver's license cards are valid for eight years and not five years. It probably, um, you know, uh, uh, the eight years probably come from the the, the research that the RTMC did um, that we haven't seen. I mean, we've asked for it, but we haven't seen it. So, you know what, it's not ideal. I I, I do get it. And I think the 10 years is sort of the, 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 the international standard, but eight years, we'll take it. Because it, 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 it really, five years is just, it, they're not coping. Never mind any other thing. It's it's they not coping with with the the amount that they've decided on. Got it. Uh, lots of comments coming in tonight, Stefani. I think Ari started off with uh, this similar comment at the beginning of the show. Uh, about the tenacity of Wayne Duvenage, the CEO of Outer. And Wayne isn't here. I'd l I mean, it would have been great to have Wayne on here, but I, I'd imagine he's appearing on every television channel right now, spreading the word. Uh, and he did record that message for us, and we've played it. But um, just um, how important has Wayne been in all of this? He's not here. We can talk behind his back. Uh, how, how, how instrumental? Would, would this have happened without, without a Wayne Duvenage? I think Wayne is the first guy that will say that this was a team effort. And I have to agree with him. I mean, we have a, a, a wonderful team and you know, each and every person in Arta had a role to play. But a team needs a leader. And I think there we have to take our hats off and kudos to a leader. And that without a leader, we would have been a flock without, you know, mm. without purpose. 
and and and, and I think it takes a leader to bring out the best in each and every member um, of this organization, and that is exactly what Wayne did. He does have a, a, the, a way of bringing people together and making sure that we all fight for 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 the for the right thing. And I think with our team, it it, it would have been a a harder fight. So thank you. you no, know, from from the bottom of my heart, but I'm, I'm I'm I really think I speak on behalf of everybody. Yeah. You know, thank you to a very good leader, inspirational leader. Well, I know it's a team victory, and not only a team victory, but a victory for all supporters, supporters of Outa and people who have funded Outa uh, along the way. You, as you watch this program, as you spread the word about Outa, it really is a. Uh, a, a, a massive, a massive uh, accomplishment. Carl Edwards asks, how did Wayne hold it together throughout this massive challenge? And I can imagine the stress at Alta has been overwhelming at times, but have a look at what has been achieved. Let me um, close off the ETOLS discussion. We'll get to electoral reform with Rachel Fisher in just a moment. But let me let me ask you, Ari, uh, you, you've watched this organization called Alta start with a fight against ETOLS and grow into what it is today. How would you describe the growth and the energy that you see at this organization. What are your comments? The journey. Well, yeah, I, I think that uh, St uh, Stefani said some great words about, you know, it started from one man who said, this is this is going to be a problem. Uh, I think uh, and Wayne coming from Avis realized they had, they had no way around how were they going to build hired cars around this ETOL system. And then he realized it was bigger than that. Um, as I said, he had to surrender his red jacket and he got a team of people together that also took big risks. Um, and, um, but, uh, you know, Arta was born and um, now I think Arta has got a uh, huge purpose, huge, huge purpose. So um, I, think, uh, I think the celebration today can be, you know, that um, this one cause has caused an organization that stands for moral substance mm. and civil courage and the and this country i know there is afri forum i don't know that afri forum covers everything i mean they have their purpose but you know outer uh, the one concern was that outer was going to start and then peter out i think it's an organization that's grand, got huge momentum and um is here to stay in fact i would be i would be scared to think that if Arta became a political party, they could rule Gauteng. Hit me enough votes. Yeah. You just took the subscribers and put them into ballot boxes. Arta would be the would be the would be in charge of Gauteng. Now that's not the way that um, I think Arta was designed to go. But it's quite scary to think that. Um, um, well, anyway, well done to the team. Yeah, I've, I've really seen did. people come up to Wayne and, and the team out of many times and say, hey, become a political party. We, we'll, we'll support yes. you. And I think that's a testament yeah. to the way that Outer has done business over the, over the, you know, over the years and, and the, yeah. the, the, the ethical way that Outer behaves. And it runs through the organization. And I guess, you know, people always say the fish rots from the head. Uh, but, you know, it always, you know, the good stuff comes from the top at all. And you mentioned Wayne Divinage stepping away from a CEO position at Avis so many years ago uh, and all of a sudden have no income and take on this fight. That's that's the kind of bravery we want yeah. from our doctors when things go wrong in hospitals. That's the kind of bravery we want from corporate CEOs when they are asked to fund, uh, a, you know, an unjust scheme. Uh, that's yeah. the kind of bravery we want. And that's the kind of bravery we see in the team at, at Alta. Not scared of a fight. Uh, Tom, I'm yeah. going to, um, I'm going to drop off now, but I'd like sure. to end off by saying, um, you know, this organization, you know, owes you guys, you know, you are on a, you know, you all got contracts and you've got work to do. So it's all part of the performance that we expect out of you, but well done. Um, and new careers for everyone, uh, but uh, well earned. And, um, I'm a very proud member of Outer, and uh, this journey, I can say it's the end of, of uh, the journey for us, uh, people with disabilities, and we can um, we're very, very thankful for what Outer did. And thanks for sticking it out all for so long. And then, of course, my last thanks to the people that kept Outer funded. You know, that was that is so critical. Too true. Um, and so uh, I'm going to drop off. You've got good work to do. Be before you me. go, before um, you go, where do we get a copy of your book? If we want the book Wheels of Fire, the, it's on screen now, the cover. Oh, yes. Okay, great. 
So you can email me on aris at iafrica.com. Um, if you're not in the country, it's on Amazon already. And it's a great read, if you don't mind me saying. Um, and um, yeah, I think everybody will learn a little bit from reading that book. Um, uh, so yeah, if uh, there's an interest, I'd be very grateful. Uh, but once again, I'd rather just say gratitude to Arta. Well done. Huge achievement. I knew this day was going to come. Mm. And so, um, yeah, great uh, work. Well uh, done. And, and, uh, and, and well done to you too, Ari, uh, for being one of the very first to get involved in this, in this battle, uh, to reach this point years and years later, to be able to say congratulations, Ari Selis, okay. uh, former, former CEO of Quad Para Association of South Africa. Thank you too for your involvement in this fight. Thanks, everybody. It was Ari Serlis, former CEO of the Quad Para Association, joined by Andrea van Heerden, Senior Legal Project Manager, and Advocate Stefani Fick, Executive Director uh, of the Accountability Division at Outer. Let's move on to electoral reform. We'll give you an update. We were speaking about it last week. What's happened since then? Rachel Fisher joins us from Cape Town. Rachel is the Parliamentary Engagement and research manager for Outer down in Cape Town. Rachel, what's happened on the electoral front since the last Outer Hour? Hello, Tom, and hello to all our How's listeners it? and viewers. Um, yeah, it's, gosh, um, it's it's been a busy front. So since the last time we spoke last week, um, the bill was voted in by National Assembly. They Not what you wanted, it. not what you wanted, right? Not what we wanted at all, you know, and we were reaching out to members of parliament to let them consider, hey, you know, there are severe complexities with this bill. And we were really hoping that, you know, they will stand up um, and vote against it. Granted, uh, the ones that voted for it um, were the majority party and one of the other opposition parties. But, you know, still is not what we wanted. Mm. Um, all is not. Uh, it is now going to the National Council of Provinces, and for that we've got a, a public participation deadline of the 9th of November. And Rachel, how's this making out and other civil activist organizations feel? There's a couple of words that come to mind. Uh, probably the first is frustrated, almost I want to say barking in the wind, you know, we are making a lot of noise, but, you know, we feel that maybe it isn't doing anything. But yet, Tom, we are more than 70 civil society organizations now banding together, having weekly meetings and discussions on this. You know, like everybody, we've got a WhatsApp group that we constantly support each other, share news. So... It is frustrating and it's it's disappointment because we were hoping for better, but it's also encouraging. So the more pushback we get, the harder we just go for it. Should, so we, we, should we be concerned? Everything. Should we be worried? Um, yes, I would say so. Um, well, first of all, as I've always say, it's uh, national elections in 2024. But uh, let me tip my hat to my colleague, Andrea. Uh, that said, you know, the best predictor for future behavior um, is past oh, behavior. Yes. And, um, you know, with ETOLs, it went out for public commentary already in November 2007. Mm. That's 15 years ago. And then it went out again in between 2011. And, you know, it's it was out for public commentary. It was snuck in into the gazettes and either people didn't know or maybe i don't know maybe felt frustrated or unsure of how to engage now let us learn from this because it's out for public commentary now so we can comment on it now we can raise our voices and put pressure so let us use etols as a lesson for elections now. Michael Van Ickhack says the current bill rewards political parties and not independents. They'll do anything in power to hold on to power. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, why would you want to share, especially if you've got a majority and you're nice and comfortable, you know, on your little heap of manure or whatever you want to call it. So um, certainly they've, they've only made small amendments as though they are appeasing us, but they are still not being fair um, towards independence. 
so many comments coming in tonight. I'm getting lost in the comment section as Stefani was earlier on. I'm just wondering who we've still got because I know that everyone's doing television interviews and going in and out of interviews the uh, the whole time. And I think Stefani I'm might... I'm still here, Tom. Well, well, while you're there, <laughs> let me ask you this question as we start to wrap up the show. You've been around at Outer for a while now, Andrea Van Heerden. In fact, you had a different surname when we first met and introduced you to the Outer Hour viewers. So you've got married in the meantime. Uh, you, and you spend all day long working on these projects. You're a legal, senior legal project manager at this organization. Let me ask you this question. When you, you know, when I, I've worked at different places and we've worked at radio stations, for example, when you walk into a studio uh, as a broadcaster, although you know the business is funded by advertisers, you know that the customers, as far as you're concerned, are the listeners. So you walk into a studio with listeners on your mind. You walk into a, you know, 702 or wherever it might have been that I've worked in. You think of the listeners. You serve the listeners. When you walk into Outer, what do you feel? You know what, Tom, I think it's just an overwhelming obligation, actually, because, yes, we are not public servants, so we don't work for government. But we have, I think we have actually more drive because we know what we're doing makes a difference, not just for us, but for ordinary citizens. So everything we do, everything I do, I always think the supporters, we have to, we have to fight. And the thing is, you keep them in mind and that motivates you because it motivates you to do the right thing to 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 do things with integrity to to be tenacious to to keep on fighting the good fight even though you're up against this massive thing called government yeah but that not detract from the common goal goal and the common purpose and one thing that i can say it's an absolute pleasure i mean i've been in private practice for many years and outer is just something completely different normally when you work in corporate you have your big heads only wanting to drive revenue. Our is not. We're driving a purpose. Yeah. And I think it's an amazing feeling to know that the work that I do, I'm part of something bigger than myself. And the people that we surround ourselves with, this organization, I mean, we are only 42 people, and that's everybody in Arta. We do the work of a Fortune 500 company because we know what we do is, has so much substance to it. So, no, it's an amazing work environment. The energy is contagious. Everybody is there. Everybody knows what they need it to is, do. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Picture. It's just an absolutely amazing organization to work for. And, again, I know I say this a lot of times, but if it wasn't for our after supporters, we won't be able, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. It's because of you that funds us. It's crowdfunded. I mean, it, and what makes Arta amazing is, we are specialized individuals. We are people at the top of their game, professionals on in, in most of uh, the, the spheres that we work in. And we get the opportunity to be bigger or to be part of something bigger than ourselves and to come in with a purpose every yeah. day. What a, what, a, what a great job experience. to have, serving the people uh, and, and serving uh, properly, un unlike so many yeah. in positions of power and office in this country. I'm wondering who we got left on screen. And there we go. Right, let's put everyone up on screen. Uh, Rachel Fisher's on your left-hand side there. I know you'll be updating us as far as electoral reform and happenings at Parliament, Rachel. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Always good to see you. Uh, Steph, uh, Andrea huh? Fick, thank you. Uh, and I have a lack of time in Cape Town. What's the weather like, uh, Rachel? It's hot. <laughs> nice. And it is beautiful. Um, yeah, I but know. I must say as hot and luck as the work we are doing um it, it certainly remains a motivation just as andrea said and you know what the fun thing is is because you know uh, the the i want to say the crowd in cape town is is different and and the type of um organizations you work with mm. so we we get to engage also with policy on a different level and putting pressure on parliament so it's this very well balanced approach that we have in the organization that makes it just so much more punchy and effective. Stefani Fix, 10, 10 second closer. Oh, you know no what? pressure. Um, um, 
I, 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 I saw a question, what was your first reaction? I really didn't know whether I am proud, uh, whether I should cry. Um, and just, I think the one word is so proud of everybody that stood with us and that we, we win, guys. This yeah. is really, it's, <laughs> this is tough that um, I will hockle. So, yes, you know, just happy. Lucker, three happy ladies on screen this evening. Uh, we've got a couple of seconds to go before I say goodbye to you until next Tuesday, uh, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. And, you know, I, I was chatting to a friend today who was driving through Soweto, coming back from an appointment, um, going past a river that looked like washing powder foam uh, and obviously not in a good state at all. And just lamenting the fact that human beings are so destructive as far as our environment concerns. And you know that we talk to Dr. Ferial Adam uh, constantly about the water issues. And it's one of the big projects that Arte is tackling. And as I was having this conversation today, with uh, th this person who was chatting to me about about the state of our rivers and the environment we were having a very negative conversation about how the world you know globally these issues that affect us energy issues and environmental destruction and climate change etc cetera, etc cetera, all of these problems we've got it seems as if human beings are hell bent on destructing uh, you know self destruction some days some days it seems that Elon Musk is the only person with you know with a good plan that one day when we when we've messed up planet earth we can all go live at Mar on Mars because it's so hard to change what is broken sometimes it's easier to build something new uh, and 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 not not have to fix however we don't have that choice in South Africa we have to fix our government we have to fix our roads. We have to fix our rivers. We have to deal with corruption. We have to fix the electricity and energy crisis we've got in South Africa. We just do not have a choice. There are no spaceships to Mars right now. Uh, you know, the furthest you can go is anywhere else on planet Earth and find a new set of problems to deal with. But I must tell you that today, watching the announcement by the transport minister to say licenses will be extended, uh, watching the finance minister talk about, look, let's let's sort this ETOLS thing out once and for all. Uh, we're, we're not going to do it the way we th we've been pushing for, and we'll make the change. Watching these changes happening, these small victories that come along, and some big victories that come along, gives me hope, and I hope it does give you hope, as just as a you know a global citizen, that if we bandy together, if we hold hands, and perhaps the lesson here in South Africa is that the power we, we assume is held by government, it's not. The power is held by every single South African that gets up in the morning and breathes the air around them, that gets up and goes to a job, that gets up and tries to get a job, that gets up and educates themselves. The hardworking women and men of South Africa who want to see a better future for their children. We have the power. It's civil activist organizations like Alta that are demonstrating this. After so many years in the desert as South Africans, where we walk around thinking there's nothing we can do, there is something we can do. And it's been proven to you time and time again now and more frequently too victory is possible the injustices we see in our own country can be dealt with the lawlessness can be stopped the violence can be eradicated the rivers can be cleaned the air can be cleaned children can be educated properly and when you go to a hospital you can be treated effectively and we don't have to stop there if we keep pushing, if we keep holding hands, if we keep supporting organizations like ours, and if you haven't, go to outer.coza, hit the join now button, become part of the solution. If we keep doing it, if we never stop, if we tackle this elephant one bite at a time, the day will come when we or our future generations turn around and say, we live in the most beautiful and prosperous country on planet Earth a country we call South Africa. That's my wish for you, as well as money and love and lots of good things over the, last, over the next seven days. My wish for you is that you, you get the enthusiasm and you get infected with the enthusiasm that the outer staff have and the civil activist organizations that represent people in South Africa have, that w the battle is far, far from lost, as long as we have breath in our bodies. Until 7 p.m. next Wednesday, I miss you already. Our fight to eradicate corruption, maladministration, unethical leaders, and the abuse of taxpayers' money by those in power continues. 
It's fresh, it's fearless, and focused. The Outer Hour.